Roth conversion. Is it right for you? I mean, the tax benefits are clear, right? You got tax-free growth, and then you have potentially tax-free withdrawals after you start retirement. Today, we're going to talk about the four things you want to keep in mind when you are preparing to do a Roth conversion. Hi, my name is Emlyn Miles Mattingly, founder and president of Gen Next Wealth, a fee-only retirement planning firm helping people bring clarity, harmony, and focus to their retirement planning. So with that, let's jump right in. So as we know, the, the, the benefits are there for Roths. You understand um, why you want to do this. If you're in retirement now, then you've probably had to pay some taxes at some point, If you're especially if you're taking money out of qualified accounts. And as you're looking at this, there's some things that we want you to consider as you're getting ready to do this uh, conversion to save money in taxes. So the first thing is, where will you live? Number one, where are you going to live when you retire? If you're expecting your federal tax rate to stay the same when you move, then this is definitely something that you want to consider. But when you think about going to other states, possibly uh, with lower taxes or that don't have income taxes at all, you want to be aware of things that they can count towards your income when you are thinking about living in a different state. Now, some states do have like, d d depending on the future residents, sometimes your uh, retirement income will be included with your conversion, right? So you have to understand that when you convert, the way that you convert from a traditional to a Roth is taking income. So if you're going to go somewhere and you understand the income brackets uh, or the tax brackets of the place that you're going to move to, this is very important for you to get that. So do some research on a state that you possibly may be living in or maybe moving to to understand that. You can always meet with a tax professional to give you more insight about how the tax treatment for your conversions will be treated in the place that you're going to live. Number two, required minimum distributions. So when we're talking about required minimum distributions, uh, these have had some changes uh, coming up this year. So we have the Secure Act 2.0 which we'll have an episode about that, about the, the changes that are going to take place in 2024. But for this, all intents and purposes, starting at age 73 for Secure Act 2022.0 in 2024, now you are going to have to take RMDs at 73. That is a required minimum distribution. So what happens is the IRS says, hey, we've given you all this time to put this money away. We've given you tax breaks to put this money away. This comes in the form of you know, making, making contributions to your IRAs, making contributions to your 401k, 403b, or whatever other retirement plan that you may have with your employer. So when you turn 73, they say it's time to turn that on and we need you to take the required minimum distributions from your account. Now, what happens there is you're going to have to take these distributions out. And sometimes people don't necessarily need that money. So what happens with this money that you're taking out on these distributions that you don't need? This is a place where you can really take uh, take some time with a tax professional and understand, OK, so if we have this extra money that we don't necessarily need, can we take some of this money out of a taxable account and change it into a non-taxable account? And how will that impact your tax situation going forward? That's something that you want to keep in mind, right? Because if you don't have to use that money and you're still required to take it out, you might want to start planning on how much money you want to take out in the years leading up to your age of 73 so that you can be in a better tax situation when you have to take them out. Now, this is talking about someone that doesn't need the money. Sometimes these contributions are the minimal uh, minimum required distributions can be larger than, you know, they, they can be they can be rather large depending on how much money you have saved. So you want to think about that. And I think this is a very, very important place to figure out on this strategy. Do you want to start taking things out of your traditional IRA and moving them into your Roth IRA prior to 73? When you have to make those distributions, it's different, right? When you have to take the money out, then you are forced to make those tax decisions. But how about looking at it this way and being proactive in your planning and saying, okay, how much am I going to need later? How much do I need now? And if you can take a portion of that, of what you need and put it into a Roth to start those conversions, because one thing about Roths is you don't have RMDs. So you can actually take that money, put it into a different account and make sure that you don't have to take it out. Now, here goes number three. 
Number three is going to be on the Medicare surtax. There's a 3.8% surtax on Medicare, okay, if you make over a certain amount. So it's whatever your modified adjusted gross income is. If it's over $250,000, then you are subject to a 3.8 Medicare surtax. You want to make sure that you understand that. So let me tell you about some of the things that apply to that surtax. It applies to net investment income, which includes interest, dividends, capital gains, annuities, rents, royalties, among other things, or your modified adjustment income above whatever the threshold is. So you want to make sure that you stay under control, like you keep this under control, because the last thing that we want to do is get hit with an additional tax when we're trying to save taxes. Once again, I did mention that when you convert from a traditional Roth, from a traditional IRA to the Roth IRA, you are going to have income that comes in. That is how you change it. That's the conversion method. You're going to have to take income out because we know that every withdrawal you make out of your traditional retirement accounts is going to have taxes because this is an income tax. Okay. So just keep that in mind as you're going through this, that Medicare surtax, you want to make sure that you understand that. Number four, leaving money, leaving legacy money. And this is what a lot of people want to do, right? A lot of people are coming to this and saying, okay, I have this money. I'm going to live on X amount of dollars. That means that I'm probably going to have a lump sum left. Now, I want to give this to my heirs. What we want to do, though, is we want to give it to them in the most favorable tax situation possible. Why is that? Because if you think about it this way, if everything that comes out of that account is going to be taxed, if the people that you're leaving this money to are working, they're going to have that money added as income to their income at the end of the year, whenever they have to take this money out. So one of the things that we see a lot of people doing is if you know that you're going to have people that are inheriting this money and you want to give them a more favorable tax situation, then you start looking at the conversion because if you can convert this into a Roth, right? Now on the distributions from that Roth, your heirs won't have to pay the taxes and it grows without taxes. So that is something that I think we want to keep in mind as we're going into this. Like, So let's recap those four things. One, where are you going to live in retirement, right? Where are you going to live? What state are you going to live in? How are the taxes going to be treated in that state? Number two, required minimum distributions, your RMDs. So we understand that the RMDs are going to start. So do you need them? If you don't, what can you do with them, right? Just think about that. Number three is that 3.8% Medicare surtax for people that make over $250,000, for married couples that make over $250,000 on their modified adjusted gross income. So we want to make sure that we understand what's happening there on that 3.8% surtax. And the last thing is legacy money. When we're trying to leave money to people, to people that we love, we love them more than we love anyone that may be at the IRS, right? And we want to give them the best tax situation possible for the money that they are going to be inheriting. One thing that we didn't mention on here is if you're going to be giving charitable money, a lot of times when it comes to donating money to charity or giving money to charity, that is a little different. They're not going to have to pay the taxes the way that someone would as an individual. So keep that in mind if you do have things that you want to donate to charity. So if you find yourself with more questions about the Roth conversion. And if it's right for you, please, we would love to meet with you. You can go over to our website, gennextwealth.com, schedule your appointment there, and we can answer more questions. Also, lastly, as we're closing, if you haven't already hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And I always ask people to do this. If you're watching this video and you're thinking about someone else as you're watching it, send it to them. There's nothing better to do than to share something that you learned with someone that you care about. Until next time, this is Emily.